Hi, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk. That's part of the Throwback Thursday series, where I talk about what went into making my coasters, what I liked and didn't like about the creations, and some fun and interesting facts about it. Today, we're taking a trip down memory lane to discuss Avatar, the last airbender dueling coasters. Let's take a look at where this creation sits on my Planet Coaster Workshop timeline. I created this for the Channel 5 Gaming Dueling Coaster Contest back in 2020. I chose Avatar The Last Airbender as the theme for my dueling coasters because the show was a favorite of mine and my family's and I wanted to bring this to life in Planet Coaster. The rich diverse world of bending, epic battles, and fantastic landscapes just begged to be recreated in this game. I also thought that having it be in dueling form, having the four elements duel each other in coasters would be really, really cool. Why not stop at two when I can go for four? <laughs> so I took up the challenge with all the enthusiasm of an earthbender hurling a boulder. <laughs> but being honest with y'all, this creation has really haunted me for years and I felt really ashamed of it. Uh, I felt ashamed of it because it didn't really do well in the contest and kind of became a joke to some people in the community, which really embarrassed me. So I tried to separate myself from this as much as I could, or I'd make a joke of it too, uh, uh, just because it hurt. I felt really disappointed with myself, my skills, and this creation became the fuel for redeeming myself in future projects. I have to admit, my dueling coasters wound up looking like a plate of spaghetti. Again, just like Bonjour and Jormungandr, I enthusiastically jumped into this project knowing Jack's squad about coaster making. 
Although this time I did honestly try to bank and smooth the coaster tracks, but I was still pretty ignorant to the process and some basic coaster making skills and knowledge. However, as I prepared for this episode, I went back to rewatch the contest spotlight of the submission. And it's weird, but watching it years later, I don't get the vibe I got when, when in the contest. Johnny actually said many positive things about it, and he was right that I was overly ambitious with the limited skill set I had at the time. And honestly, that's fair. As I filmed the cinematics for this episode, I also found it quite healing, too. Yes, the coasters are janky as fuck, but the scenes, theming, terraforming aren't horrible, and I'm just done hating on this creation, as, like I said, had I not done this and had the experiences from it, I wouldn't have been so driven to prove myself and create what I did later. So overall, this was a big part in my plan code journey. I will also link the contest video along with POVs that I made for each coaster, but honestly, I wouldn't watch my POVs of this coaster. Um, to watch it on Channel 5's, because uh, I had some recording issues and it gets scratchy at the end with the computer and programming that I used at the time. And honestly, I'm just not feeling it about remaking those POV videos. Maybe one day, but mm, right now I've got other things I want to do. And it's also part of my YouTube journey of, well, this is where I started off with. And hopefully you can tell that I've improved and this area too. Let's start our journey at the entrance to the coaster park where I recreated the city of Ba Sing Se. The facades of the buildings camouflaged hiding the entrances to all four coasters as well as the exit. The elemental flags representing each nation served as a beautiful exception and these were made by the talented TMTK artist and Angelinear. One feature I'm particularly proud of is the tree overlooking the city of Ba Sing Se, complete with Uncle Arrow's son, Lu Ten's memorial. Just like in the TV series, it's the little details that I loved about this creation and a way to do a nod of one of my favorite episodes from that series. And of course, the monorail from Ba Sing Se connecting it thematically to the Air Nomads area, I thought turned out really well too. It doesn't work, uh, but I like the aesthetics of it and it makes it feel like Ba Sing Se to me. So that's what I liked, but what I didn't like about this area is, well, here's the catch. I named every single building after the community members I knew at the time. While it was a nice gesture, I think it did break the immersion just a bit. And in the spotlight, Johnny struggled to read those signs in his contest spotlight, especially his own. <laughs> so that's just a little thing right there. We're going to move on to the Air Nomads coaster. I loved the breathtaking vistas from the second lift hill as you prepare to duel with the Fire Nation coaster. The upside down Western air temples are a real highlight from the air coaster perspective. The theming in the Cave of the Two Lovers section, where it duels with the Earth Kingdom, was a personal favorite. Boog was so kind in making the lovers for me, as time was beginning to get away from me in the contest, and he recreated Oma and Shu perfectly. The crystals used in the section were also a way to recreate that scene in the cave from the episode. But I have to admit that I wasn't thrilled with the coaster's design and overall smoothness. The banking left much to be desired, just like our old friend Jormungandr. Now let's fire up the excitement in the Fire Nation queue and coaster. Some of the things that I really liked about this coaster experience was the music chosen for this coaster. I feel it really embraced the Fire Nation's vibe and the nighttime visuals with the fire effects were cool. Uh, let's change that to a hot scene to see. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a roll, folks. <laughs> 
the views from the top of the second lift hill as you prepared to duel with the Air Nomads coaster were striking, and I liked how the air coaster hung directly over the fire coaster. And then seeing the Western Air Temples at night was a favorite too. So the thing that I didn't like about the fire coaster experience were the coaster tracks design left something to be desired, just like the Air Nomad coaster. Also, the airships at the top of the second lift hill could have used more lighting, and I wish I'd known about the timing the triggers for those burning rocks coming down. So those are some of the things that I wasn't too pleased with. Next up, we're making a splash at the Water Tribe queue and coaster. The queue features Combat Wombat's stunning frozen waterfall, which to me just catches my breath as you round the corner and this comes into view. And I liked it so much I used it again in the queue. As you reach the top of the queue and approach the coaster station, the view of the Water Tribe area opens up beautifully too, showing the Water Tribe Palace, and this is one of my favorites. I really wish that I had the time to create the whole palace area and I'll insert some pictures right here to show what I'm referring to but time wasn't on my side and then also if I went all out with this area I would have had to do the same thing with each other area and I just didn't have the time for that so that was uh, a regret that I wish I could have done but I still am really impressed with this area the water tribe palace area Besides the gate and the first, like the front part of the palace with the gate, I made everything else to the palace. Uh, the air temple's appearance as you crest the first lift hill is one of my favorites. As you get to the top and you see that coming to view, it that just always takes my breath away and it is a favorite. Also, dueling with a Fire Nation coaster and the coaster's final stretch on this water coaster is another highlight that I liked. But again, what I didn't like about this coaster experience is the coaster's layout, which is a reoccurring theme in this project. I also didn't like how the snow walls I made around the station looked really janky. They weren't as seamless as I had wished they would have been. Finally, we arrive at the Earth Kingdom queue and coaster. The queue and coaster station are my personal favorites thematically. The views of the air temple as you crest the first lift hill and the beauty of the cave of the two lovers from this coaster are highlights, as well as right before descending the third lift hill and seeing the western air temples in front. Also, coming from the dueling section with a water tribe coaster at dusk or evening and seeing a different angle of the air temple is another favorite of mine. But again, just like the other three coasters, what I didn't like about this is the layout has a lot to be desired and I ran out of time to fully theme the Earth Kingdom area as I had hoped to. The contest's time constraints certainly made things challenging, but also it had taken me a month to, out of two months of the total contest time to create the coasters, leaving a month for the theming. So yeah, I did take a big chunk <laughs> on my plate. All right, let's talk about the lag. This park is undeniably laggy, but I'm not gonna put all the blame on the TMTK like I used to. As I've grown in the game, I realize that's not fair and it's not the case. You know, TMTK is a godsend for a lot of things that, at least for me, that I can't make in the game. But at this point in my plane code journey, I didn't know the effect of having too much of these amazing pieces would do to the FPS. I used a lot of the TMTK uh, blueprints from the workshop in addition to having some amazing creations made from TMTK for this contest by Anne Angelinier. In addition to what I used, the beautiful airships and boats and two of the palaces are made out of a single TMTK wood piece <laughs> that I didn't know would contribute to the lag. In hindsight, I should have just stuck with Anne Angelinier's wonderful blueprints that he specifically made and the and Christine's two palaces and boats and that would have been you know 
okay f you know for the fps and tmtk pieces and then just figured out alternatives for other things that i use the tmtk for but in addition to the tmtk there are other factors that contributed to the lag such as the flying bison nursery that you see from the air coaster station all those trees in this area when you get over it it makes it the fps drop and get laggy uh, yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, in addition to that, the trigger effects, which are constantly running throughout the park, add to the lagginess. They weren't on sequencers or time to the coasters or anything like that. So they're constantly running and that, that will make your FPS drop and make it things laggy. But you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? <laughs> but I've grown and I, you know, I've, I've learned from other, working with other creators and experiences and talking to people and it's like, oh, okay, filing that away. And so you can only learn and move forward, right? All right, let's talk about some fun facts about this creation. The terraform serpent that you see in the Earth Kingdom area happened by mistake. As I was terraforming, the mountains I was making looked like a serpent, and it reminded me of the episode Serpent's Pass. So I just turned the mountain into a giant serpent and put the gate there uh, as a nod to that episode. Also, I'm really extremely proud of my Western Air Temples, and I'll insert some pictures for to show what they look like in the series. I had struggled trying to create temples and pagodas that could be turned upside down because using grid, grid pieces is hard to do, having them flip upside down. So I took this problem to bed with me for several nights, falling asleep to figuring out how I could recreate these temples. It was really important for me to incorporate them into this creation. Then I actually dreamed of the solution after several nights and upon waking up went immediately to my computer to follow how I saw the solution in my dream. I'm really excited about these because with this solution I know I can do the same with another creation I've been working on that will use this method to achieve upside down buildings. Also. Uncle Iroh's quotes in each palace. Uncle Iroh was my favorite character in a series, besides Appa the Flying Bison. So I have a special Easter egg of his quotes in each of the elemental palaces. Moving on, I mentioned before, but Christine Le Lebever, I, I think she goes by a different name now, a talented planet coaster creator, made all the custom ships, some of the Buddhist, the, the Buddhist drum, the temple decor, and some entrance arches, and two palaces for me for this creation. She was really enthusiastic about when I told her about what I was doing, and, and without her help, you know, a lot of what you see would not have been done. So thank you. I really appreciate her. Also, the amazing SPR Ridley allowed me to use his baby Appa that he had made for the creator Uthris as a prototype for my bigger basic shape Appa and also allowed me to use his baby floating bison. So thank you SPR Ridley. The amazing TMTK artist and engineer collaborated with me to create four flags to represent each element as well as the dope characters from the TV series for me. He also made the entrance sign that you see in the Ba Sing Se Plaza. This project was the first of many collaborations with this artist and I highly recommend giving them a follow on their Patreon page and I'll link his uh, Patreon page in the description. 
Last, but definitely not least, my best pal Boog was so helpful in giving me tips and advice as we both worked on our respective dueling projects. He did the dope as fuck Saruman vs. the Ents, which I'm a big fan of. He not only pulled off an amazing dueling submission that went on to win in his bracket, but he also found the time to make the wonderful statues of the two lovers that you see in the Cave of the, cave of the Two Lovers, as well as the four custom arches that match the theme of each coaster that you see for as you begin the, your ascent up the lift hills. So thank you so much, Boog, for all that you did. I really appreciate it. Some other fun facts. The Air Temple is an enlarged version of the pagoda I made for the Kingdom of the Giants collaboration. The pond area that went with the pagoda in the Kingdom of the Giants collab is again recreated and used in the Earth Q area, and I used it again in a large section of my bedtime rituals mini park. The buildings of Ba Sing Se are recreated with slightly better roofs <laughs> from the Kingdom of the Giants collab too. Uh, these were in my old Tokyo neighborhood. I changed the color and broke the buildings apart to make several small buildings to mix and match and create the plaza of Ba Sing Se with these. The very first, also I wanted to talk about the very first creation in Planet Coaster of the Avatar The Last Airbender Universe was Uthris, and I hope I'm saying his name right. He did a series based on the Air Temple from The Legend of Korra, and I'll put links to his series in the description as well. I think this Dueling Coaster submission was the second, and I honestly feel like I let the fans of this beloved series down by not having it turn out as well as I had hoped. I had intentions of redeeming this creation by redoing it one day. That is, until I saw, also known as Superman's amazing creation, Avatar The Four Nations, action-packed coaster with some incredible effects that simulated the different bending styles and really phenomenal earth bending effects that you see on his coaster that he made and I think for the I think he made it for the action coaster contest in channel 5. So as soon as I saw that submission featured, I just shelled that idea of redeeming this creation and I deleted my up my updated park file that I had begun to work on. Um yeah, and it's okay. I'm t totally at. And then the last creation in this universe in represented in Planet Coaster, Superman went on with his partner Tanzo Sexwing to create the amazing City of Omashu Mini Park, giving Boog and I and many other teams in our bracket of the Mini Park 2 Duos Contest in Channel 5. He, the, yeah, they gave us really stiff competition with the City of Omashu. And I will link that because if you're an Avatar fan, you guys got to see this. So I feel really happy that this series that I loved watching with my family wound up being really well represented in the hands of these creators. While I wasn't able to fully bring my visions to reality for this creation, I'm no longer embarrassed about this creation and I'm proud of some of the parts in this coaster park. I learned and grew so much from this. This creation has impacted me on many levels as a plain co creator and definitely part of my journey in Planet Coaster. Thank you guys so much for joining me today as I revisited this creation. I hope you enjoyed it and leave any comments for me. I enjoy looking at the comments. Until the next video, peace, love, and blessed be. Bye, y'all.